friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenna, but you guys can call me Jen. Hello! That was a little backwards. Usually my greeting is a little bit different, but honestly at this point, if I don't know my own greeting, it's my own issue. <laughs> Hi, hello. Welcome to the start of another weekend reading vlog. This is going to be a little bit different because it's uh, Saturday already, and it's also um, one o'clock already, and I might take this vlog into the week. Who knows? But I hope you're all doing very well. I hope you're enjoying your weekend or you enjoyed your weekend because it's a Tuesday when this goes up. So I hope you're enjoying your day as you're watching this and I hope you're uh, staying happy and staying safe. Um, this weekend I have a zero plans, which is amazing. <laughs> I, um, I, the only plan I do have are for my own, for my own sake of things. And that includes writing a little bit because today Kate Cavanaugh is participating in her 24 hour read a write a thon, and I'm going to participate in a few hours of that. I can't possibly do a 24 hour write a thon, that's a lot. I'm finishing up a video that I have started yesterday, and I it is basically trying to read a duology in 24 hours. Um, letting myself sleep in the middle of it, but like, you know, 24 hours of constant reading time. Um, so you'll have to stay tuned to see which duology I pick. Um, if you haven't already figured it out from the context clues of my bookstagram and the booktubes, arguably, uh, their favorite duology. So who knows? And, um, uh, today also Reagan from Prue's Project is hosting like very gently just a readathon all weekend for, I think it, she's calling it the Peruse readathon. I'm not sure. I'll correct myself on the screen if I'm not if she if I'm wrong. Um, it's the social distancing type of readathon where we just read a bunch of books together, and I plan on doing that as well. I don't know what I'm going to end up reading. I have a lot of books on the go. I still have Pride and Prejudice to finish. I have Harry Potter and the, pa and the Prisoner of Azkaban, which is on audiobook. I probably won't finish that this week or this weekend because it's not really on my top of my thing. I just like to listen to the audiobooks when I'm doing work and just doing that kind of stuff. Uh, what else? I also have an e-arc from NetGalley that I should probably get going on because its um, date is coming up in April really soon and it's a really really big arc so I probably won't be able to get it up before it is published but I still want to get some kind of review up for it. Um, and then I also have another book that I'm reading for another video that was supposed to go up on Friday, but I didn't end up finishing it, so I just pushed it to next Friday, so I should finish that book first. And then there's a million books that I want to read that are on my t TBR, like the, namely, uh, V.E. Schwab's The Near Witch, um, Illumine, which shouldn't probably take me very long. This is probably on the top of my docket, besides the book that I'm trying to finish for the other video. Um, because it's gonna be really fast read, I can just tell, because it's mixed media, right? Even though it's large, it's mixed media, it shouldn't take me long at all. And then I also want to get to my classic, The House of Mirth. Um, even though I'm reading Pride and Prejudice, I do want to get to this at some point. And I have my other classic, A Room of One's Own, by, uh, Victoria Woolf, and it's one of those months that my TBR has kind of just gone out the window because I bought a few books this month and then ended up reading those first, which is kind of just... A habit of mine. <laughs> um, like I read The Kingdom of Fact that wasn't on my original TBR and then this book that I'm reading for a video is not on my original TBR. <sighs> but yeah, at least the two duology books were. One of them was. I didn't include the other one because I was like, maybe, but they're both on my TBR in my head. So that works. Um, but yes, anyways, welcome to another reading vlog. I hope you guys enjoy this and are uh, ready to see me read a lot. But yes, <laughs> I'll catch up with you in a little bit. Hey guys, it's me again. I'm coming in to update you that I have finished my video and my read for the 24 hour thing. I'll give you a little sneak peek of it. Um, it was amazing and now I'm all emotional and gross about it, so that's great. But now, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I think I'm gonna take a break from reading because I've been reading for like many, many, many hours straight. <laughs> and I think I'm gonna do some writing, maybe watch some booktube, and then pick up 
something else. I don't know what I'm going to read first. I don't know what I'm going to finish first. Possibly the book that I'm staring at right now, which will be in a video next Friday. Or for you guys, it'll be Friday now. Even though I said in my last reading vlog it was not. Um, yes. Oh my god. Now I need... Okay. And then after that, maybe... I don't know. Do I need a, like a huge change of scene? Do I need to read more YA? Do I need to more, read more fantasy? Do I read this? I don't know. We will find out and I will update you. But yes. Saturday's going pretty well. Saturday's going pretty well, you guys. <laughs> again just because I wanted to uh, take a break because I was doing a puzzle I finished a turtle almost there's a few pieces that I just can't find so we'll just have to wait and take a break um and I'm going to eat a little bit of a lunch and watch a little bit of a YouTube possibly turn on my dual monitor do some writing uh, but what I wanted to update you on is a little bit of reading so last night I Try. I had a raging headache, so I took two Advil just to like get it solved. <laughs> um, because yesterday I also spent a lot of time on the computer, and I think that's why um, I ended up having. I ended up writing for a while, and then I had a Skype call with my friends, which was very lovely to see their faces and hear their voices. And then I did some more writing, watched some YouTube videos and that kind of stuff and then I had a major headache so I went downstairs and I was like okay so I took off my glasses I just put on some YouTube videos in the background so I had something to listen to and then I tried to read Illuminae and I got about 30 some pages in and it just wasn't clicking with me I think it's the formatting of the book it's just not the kind of formatting that I want to have <laughs> Um, so instead, I decided to try The Near Witch by V.E. Schwab, which is also on my, uh, TBR, and I am adoring it. I am <laughs> loving this so much. I am only a little way through it. I'm on page 52 right now, and the, just the prose is incredible. It's just so lovely. So, so lovely. Oh, I just... Like the entire time I'm sitting here, I'm like, I just want to have like a, a segment in my reading vlog where I just read to you guys because that, this book is just so pretty. So I might do that a little bit later, but anyways, I'm going to continue with this.
I'm on my lunch break at for work. <laughs> for work. So, um, yesterday was great. What did I do yesterday? I think the last time I updated you was like halfway through the day. Um, after I spent some time writing, um, I made a big decision yesterday to just cut out one of my POV characters because I wasn't entirely sure on her story um, and I didn't really know if it was adding anything to the, the book to have her storyline in there. She's still going to be in it as a character and when her storyline meets up with the other two it'll make sense but I've just taken it out for now <laughs> and we're just going to work with the first two and then in the next book because it's going to be I think a trilogy or a four book thing I don't know yet it's a debate in my brain um but she will come in in the next one probably as a POV character because I love her so much and I need her to be a POV character at some point but this first book I think I need to keep it a little bit simpler um so I'm gonna do that <laughs> um so I ended up writing for the majority of yesterday and then mom wanted to play battleships as you saw we only got through one game because she beat me very easily um I, I can't my game my luck with that game was terrible uh, but then I went downstairs and I set up my Wii and I ended up playing Mario Kart for a bit and then I played my dad in Mario Kart and then I was like I'm gonna set up my GameCube to play Animal Crossing because I'm feeling so much FOMO right now. Um, everyone on Twitter is talking about the new Animal Crossing game um, and I don't have a Switch and I don't have the means right now to just drop that amount of money on a Switch and the game um, for no reason. Uh, saving money is a smart idea. Uh, eventually I'll get a Switch. I'm just gonna slowly save up but um, I have the old, old, old the OG Animal Crossing um, game. It's like just Animal Crossing. There's no extra titles to it. And uh, it was a great time. Um, so that's something that I'm looking forward to going back to later today downstairs. Uh, but once my day is done here at around three-ish, um, I have my student uh, FaceTiming me around 4.30 because we're going to go, we're going to have a lesson, an e-lesson, and see where she's at. And then, uh, other than that, do some reading, probably. I read it till, to page like 104 of The Near Witch last night, and it was, and it's great. It's, I was reading it, and I'm like, yeah, the prose is beautiful, and it feels so much like Victoria, the way she talks, which is really great, because um, I follow Victoria Schwab on Instagram, and I listen to her stories all the time. And, uh, but it also feels like a first book. It, you can tell it's a first book. I don't know why, it just, because I've read Darker Shade of Magic 2, I can see the difference between the two prose styles that she's started with and then now that she's working with, which is good. Obviously you wanna improve as a writer, but I'm still baffled at how good this um, debut was. <laughs> so I'm enjoying it, I'm enjoying it, but yeah. I also had to uh, stop myself from buying a lot of books this morning because I can't buy any more books. I ended up buying a uh, book at Walmart yesterday when mom and I went out. We just went out to quickly to grab something, uh, some things at Walmart and I found a, um, a thriller called Eight Perfect Murders by Peter Swanson. It's one of the new ones coming out and I've heard um, Books and Lala talk about it. Um, I've avoided the plot like a, like the plague because I'm so interested in it because the premise is a guy who works at a mystery crime bookstore has released a list previously of the eight perfect bookish murders and now somebody is reenacting these murders and it's like that kind of thing so I'm really intrigued in it and I'm going to read it for the Owls Readathon. It's one of my books in the Owls Readathon because I think arithmancy, one of the prompts is to read something that's outside of your favorite genre. So I'm like, might as well go really far out of my favorite genre of fantasy and do um, crime and a thriller because it's been a long time since I've read a crime thriller novel and I'm not a fan of thriller novels usually because I don't like being scared, but I'm really intrigued by this one. So that's exciting. 
But yeah, I had to stop myself from making an, an order of, um, I really want the middle grade series. Um, I think it's called Wings of Fire. I really want to get into it. I realized that there's like over 15 books in the series, but I really want to get into it. And I had to stop myself from buying the book, um, the box set of the first five this morning. <sighs> because, you know, being in <laughs> social isolation, all I want to do is buy books. But anyways, I should eat my macaroni and cheese because I had macaroni yesterday for dinner my leftovers <laughs> and uh, then get back to my work day. I just thought I'd update you and tell you where I'm at <laughs> but I'll catch up with you a little bit later. It's a little bit later and um, before I close out the vlog I wanted to do a little bit of reading for you guys because I mentioned it earlier in the vlog that um, V.E. Schwab, I, this is a terrible angle, I don't know how I'm going to do this, um, V.E. Schwab's The Near Witch um, like demands to be read, you know? It's one of those books that you just... All right, whatever this is gonna have to work that it just it demands to be read to people out loud because the prose is just delicious so I'm gonna read you the opening um, I don't know how long I'm gonna read for but this is V.E. Schwab's The Near Witch one it starts with a crack a sputter and a spark the match hisses to life Please, comes the small voice behind me. It's late, Wren, I say. The fire chews on the wooden stem in my hand. I touch the match to each of the three candles gathered on the low chest by the window. It's time for bed. With the candles all lit, I shake the match and the flame dies, leaving a trail of smoke that curls up against the darkened glass. Everything seems different at night. Defined. Beyond the window, the world is full of shadows, all pressed together in harsh relief, somehow sharper than they ever were in daylight. Sounds seem sharper, too, at night. A whistle, a crack, a child's whisper. Just one more, she pleads, hugging the covers close. I sigh my back to my little sister and run my fingers over the tops of the books stacked beside the candles. I feel myself bending. It can be a very short one, she says. My hand rests against an old green book as the wind hums against the house. All right, I cannot deny my sister anything, it seems. Just one, I add, turning my back to the bed. Wren sighs happily against her pillow, and I slip down beside her. The candles paint pictures of light on the walls of our room. I take a deep breath. The wind on the moors is a tricky thing, I begin, and Wren's small body sinks deeper, deeper into the bed. I imagine she is listening more to the highs and lows of my voice than the words themselves. We both know the words by heart anyway. I from my father, and Wren from me. Of every aspect of the moor, the earth and the stone and rain and fire, the wind is the strongest one in near. Here, on the outskirts of the village, the wind is always pressing close, making windows groan. It whispers and it howls and it sings. It can bend its voice and cast it into any shape, long and thin enough to slide beneath the door, stout enough to seem a thing of weight and breath and bone. The wind was here when you were born, when I was born, when our house was built when the council was formed, and even when the near witch lived, I say with a quiet smile, the way my father always did, because this is where the story starts. Long, long ago, the near witch lived in a small house on the farthest edge of the village, and she used to sing the hills to sleep. Wren pulls the covers up. She was very old and very young, depending on which way she turned her head. 
for no one knows the age of witches. The more steams were her blood, and the more grass was her skin, and her smile was kind and sharp at once, like the moon in the black, black night. I hardly ever get to the end of the story. Soon enough, Bren is a pile of blankets and quiet breath, shifting in her heavy dreams beside me. The three candles are still burning on the chest, leaning into one another, dripping and pooling on the wood. Ren is afraid of the dark. I used to leave the candles lit all night, but she falls asleep so fast, and if she does wake, she often finds her way, eyes closed, into our mother's room. Now I tend to stay up until she's drifted off, and then blow the candles out. No need to waste them, or set the house on fire. I slide from the bed, my bare feet settling on the old wood floor. When I reach the candles, my eyes wander down to the puddles of wax, dotted with tiny fingerprints where Wren likes to stand on her tiptoes and draw patterns in the pools while the wax is warm. I brush my own fingers over them absently when something, a sliver of movement, draws my eyes up to the window. There's nothing there. Outside, the night is still and streaked with silver threads of light, and the wind is breathing against the glass a wobbling hum that causes the old wooden frame to groan. My fingertips drift up from the wax to the windowsill, feeling the wind through the walls of our house. It's getting stronger. When I was young, the wind sang me lullabies, lilting, humming, high-pitched things, filling the space around me so that even when all seemed quiet, it wasn't. This is a wind I have lived with, but tonight it's different. As if there's a new thread of music woven in, lower and sadder than the rest. Our house sits at the northern edge of the village of Nier, and beyond the weathered glass the moor rolls away like a spool of fabric, hill after hill of wild grass, dotted by rocks and a rare river or two. There is no end in sight, and the world seems painted in black and white, crisp and still. A few trees jut out of the earth amid the rocks and weeds, but even in this wind it all is strangely static. But I'd swear I saw again something moves. This time my eyes are keen enough to catch it. At the edge of our yard, the invisible line where the village ends and the moor picks up, a shape moves against the painted night. A shadow twitches and steps forward, catching a slice of moonlight. I squint, pressing my hands against the cool glass. The shape is a body, but drawn too thin, like the wind is pulling at it, tugging slivers away. The moonlight cuts across the front of the form, over fabric and skin, a throat, a jaw, a cheekbone. There are no strangers in the town of Nier. I have seen every face a thousand times, but not this one. And I'm going to stop there. I hope you enjoyed. <laughs> I just thought I'd read a little bit of it. So I am going to throw all of this footage into my computer and upload it and do all that lovely stuff that comes with filming vlogs <laughs> to have it up for you guys tomorrow morning. So I hope you enjoyed watching this vlog. Um, since I last talked to you, I wrote a little bit. It was very little. It was like 200 words. I just wanted to touch the story a little bit today and not really work with it not add to it or anything because uh, my brain just didn't want to write um my brain really just wants to watch merlin which is what i'm doing <laughs> and then so i have my computer ready to edit this video and then i also realized that i have this book which is a secret book to finish still for friday <laughs> so i have to do that i have to read a chunk of it tonight a little bit of it tonight at least because it's already eight and editing this and getting it up, it'll probably about be about like 9.30ish by the time I can get get into this. But I also just want to read. I also just want to watch Merlin. <laughs> so we shall see how that ends up. But I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know down below how your week has been, how your weekend is was, how your Tuesday is going. If you're watching it on a Tuesday, you know chat to me tell me what you're currently reading tell me how this isolation is going for you for me it's not very different from my day to day but um i'm home a lot more <laughs> than i am um usually especially from monday to thursday if you've seen my day in the life you'll know why but yeah 
I wish you guys the happiest of days, and I hope to catch you in another video soon. Stay kind and keep on reading.